Great. Yeah. What's it been? Two no years? Doubt. Yeah. Probably around there. Yeah. 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 And do you hold a grudge? But oh, <laughs> come on! <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ! That was Toby. nobody's fault. <laughs> oh my uh, God! I got to explain to Bill Burr. What Barr. happened? What uh, happened? Uh, we're we're over drama we, on this show. Not, we come had, on! No, uh, we love Mike. Uh, Mike has been doing our show forever. I, I don't even know. At least eight years. At, at this least point. has always yeah. been one of the best guests we've we had. We love Mike, like, uh, and yeah. and we got in a weird situation where Victoria Gotti was in the air. And Mike Rowe was also in here, and we talked to him for maybe like five minutes, but we we're going to get back to him, and Victoria was coming in for a book tour or whatever, and she fucking scared the shit out of us. We just sat there and listened to her for two straight hours. Well, and the thing shut is, up. And See? Mike's sitting there just twiddling his fucking thumbs going, when are you coming, getting back to me? And none no. of us knew how to handle the situation. It's because it wasn't really a book tour. It was a book reading. And what she did was she said, here's a book I have, and it's maybe a thousand pages, and I thought it'd be cool if I read that. If them I all. just read it, I'm right like now, 300 for all of you. We didn't know what to do that no. day. It was one of those weird days that we just couldn't get ourselves out of a weird situation. We ended up sending him booze and everything. We you felt did, so bad. You sent me booze, and I drank it uh, okay. in, in, uh, in a display of solidarity. So. <laughs> What a segue. Speaking of booze, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> how booze built America uh, tomorrow, 10 p.m. on Discovery Channel. Yeah. What uh, now? What does this cover the entire history of booze in America? That's all. Yeah. Ah, nice. yeah, we want to take a small, modest bite, so we went with two, uh, you know, enduring institutions. Actually, what happened was I just couldn't do dirty jobs anymore. Yeah, um, I mean, finally it's, had it. Well, it's not done, done. It's just that you know, each year you'd write down like a slightly different goal, like five more, ten more, three more states, and you know, hundred jobs, two hundred jobs. So we wound up doing three hundred jobs. <clears throat> we got to all fifty states. Wound up going to Australia, and we came back, and it was like, look, w w what would a world look like where we just didn't do this for a minute, you know, <laughs> and uh, and everybody said, well, uh, we don't know what would it look like, and so we had this big talk, and I, the, what 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 it came down to was, what do you like? And I said, I, I like I like booze, and I like history. So let's do a show about booze and history. History of booze, but it really is. It really is pretty amazing. I mean, if you look back, you know, from the day the Pilgrims landed, which, by the way, they weren't going to Plymouth; they were going to Virginia. They landed in Plymouth because they ran out of beer, and you know, beer was the every every single day gallons and gallons and gallons they drank six seven times the amount of beer we drank their kids drank beer every day nice and so you know from the taverns <laughs> you know to the, to the sugar tax to the molasses tax to the revolution to the civil war to all through prohibition of course every single major thing that impacted the country <sighs> booze is always in the room the whole thing was a bar fight basically that's, yeah that's one big it giant bar crawl it's exactly right yeah the fur trappers you know that went west were following indian trails but of course there was no money back then so the only real currency were beer for pelts and booze so all the commerce that drove the country west happened because people were trading in alcohol and uh you know i mean it's not the most glorious way to look at the country but it's actually really cool and the more you learn the more interesting it gets and so the next thing you know you're you're in a bar recreating carry nation ring any bells uh, with you guys prohibition woman there yeah it was more like temperance yeah. right so mm. it's you know 1904 this is a scene in one of the episodes that I love, but we do these elaborate recreations that I'm allowed to basically walk through. So it's like Forrest Gump meets Zelig, you know, and I'm just this guy in a T-shirt and a ball cap. Suddenly, it's 1904. We're in Sullivan's Bar here in New York. You know, John O'Sullivan, bare-knuckle boxing champion. It's a true story. And uh, Carrie Nation walks into the bar, who at the time is a little over six feet tall, 200 pounds, carrying a hatchet. And she had been doing these things called hatchetings all over the country where she'd walk into a bar and just, just tear the shit out of it. She was very angry. What a bitch. Yeah. What, did she, what did she have uh, up her ass? Well, you know, a couple of alcoholic ex-husbands uh, <laughs> and just, you know, oh, it's just a yeah. trail of tears, right? Yeah. So I bet they were real nice back then. Yeah. So she's on the leading edge of making sure booze is, is off the mm -hmm. table. And the point of this show is to say, okay, there's a moment where John Sullivan, bare-knuckle boxing champion, is running for his life from a lunatic with a hatchet who's tearing up his bar. And had that not happened, we don't go to the moon. All right, now you've got to figure out how that connects. Exactly. And so the show really becomes a look at a series of seemingly uh, disparate events that ultimately push us to the moon. Did somebody in that bar run out? And uh, was there a woman who was like going to go home, but she got scared in the locker room, so she fucked this guy, Frank Armstrong? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like you've seen the show. Frank Armstrong. <laughs> She got all hammered. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's, I mean, it's, uh, it's just one of those, 
I mean, it's an old formula, but you make a crazy claim and everybody looks at you and they go, no, that's, that's not possible. And then 10 minutes later, they're going, that might be possible. And then 20, you're like, oh, you know what? I can see how this could happen. You connected the dots. Yeah, because, you know, thanks. <laughs> but so, is it an accurate connection or is it like uh, six degrees possible. of separation? That's not possible. Uh, no, it's totally accurate. I mean, it's, it, if it were most any other station, we could probably make stuff up. But, you know, Discovery mm, right. is still clinging to that idea that, no, no, it's the truth. Right. And the truth it is. You know, so Carry Nation gets you to temperance. Temperance goes to prohibition. Billions are made in illegal booze. One of the guys who made all that money uh, is Joe Kennedy Sr. Uh, yeah. Joe Kennedy Sr. has John Kennedy. Wade leads on to Way. He gets him elected. West Virginia swing state. And the end of this dick hard. Right. We will go to the moon and do those other things. And there you go. Vladi, Vladi, Vladi. Right. Wow, yeah. Okay. We were just talking about Joe Kennedy and, and booze. Yeah, you know, you must know a lot about that whole situation. I uh, just told you everything. This, I yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's pretty much that's it. Joe Kennedy, <laughs> something about some booze. That is <laughs> I mean, I read a book. I can read it for you. If you oh, like. yeah. <laughs> Why don't we have him read a book? <laughs> How do we know that? Uh, is the there audio of that? I would love to listen to you guys when you're uncomfortable comfortable silence oh it's just a right it, oh no, did you feel like you were going to get whacked if you actually said yeah something? that's that's what it was uncomfortable yeah. because of who her father was i mean even yeah, though I you knew know he was what, dead but she still. was she was she was interesting she was for a nice while, but then it was oh, obvious it was time for her crazy. to go and none of us knew how to do it yeah <laughs> and we've been doing <laughs> this a long time trust me we know how to do it usually yeah. It was Chapter just a weird two. day man yeah well she was really i mean she was selling it in that way that you know how it gets very personal in here sometimes, mm. and she was yeah. looking at you. Yeah, I mean, she, she was, was like looking right across this monitor. Yeah, and 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 suddenly I felt I felt just listening, like I had stumbled into, I don't know, like an inappropriate biography or like the reading of somebody's will. And I, I'm not in the will, and I shouldn't be in the room. And, oh shit! But, I just, but in all fairness, like you didn't know how to leave. I didn't. Because I think you did want to go, you know what, it's obvious they're not getting back to me anytime soon. Actually, no one's going to be talking for the next half hour, but you right. didn't know how to sneak out. Well, there's got, you know, there's always protocol, right? Or, or if nothing yeah. else matters. And I'm like, I don't know how to, I, I, don't, I don't know how to get the hell out of here. <laughs> it was a weird day. It was funny. How do we know that um, the Mayflower landed in, in Plymouth because they ran out of beer? Uh, William Bradford uh, was the diarist on the Mayflower, and he wrote extensively about it. We are uh, we are much spent, especially our vittles and our beer. But back in 1620... It's a text I just sent to uh, Ange, who takes care of my kegs. <laughs> yes, you need more uh, fiddle. They were also uh, probably exhausted the from, from the trip over. Like, fuck Virginia, this right. is land. This is good enough. Let's pull over. I mean, it's you've got to remember, too, the whole idea of... You know, I mean, today we don't even think about it. I mean, they didn't have longitude back then, right? So you don't know exactly where you're going anyway. You have no, there's no GPS. You have no idea when How you're landing. How the fuck do they even figure the, that out? The, the, the courage that took back then. Sure. The balls. You, you take it for granted now, but so that's yeah. a whole other story. Finding longitude is the single biggest um, mathematical riddle ever solved, mm. and it was a multi-million dollar prize. Well, they had to give the people a lot of latitude to find that oh, longitude. Hey. So, oh, you hey now. We that's a good one. <laughs> Chip is like, Anthony that's Durante. a good one. Page of the Victoria a Gotti. A latitude and longitude. <laughs> how, how do they figure that out? <laughs> Ultimately, uh, I mean, back then it was all the celestial clock, you know, right. so if it were cloudy, you, know, you, you just didn't know anything. Uh, but a guy named John Harrison uh, invented a better watch, right. a watch that could actually keep time on a boat and until then they were all pendulum clocks you put a pendulum clock on the deck of a heaving ship you know forget it yes mm. but uh, eventually eventually it was harrison's invention that figured out longitude so i saw them trying to sell one of those on uh pawn stars of course different network course, i'm sorry yes, yeah. but um <laughs> they uh they were trying to sell one of those because somebody came in trying to sell one of those clocks yeah uh and and it was, a fraud. It was like no it was real and he wanted like ten thousand dollars for it and i think they offered him like 300 bucks <laughs> Nice. Well, he's got to leave it in his shop. He's got to make some money. Oh, I don't know. It's got to be framed. It takes forever it's got to be uh, refurbished. Yeah, it takes all oh, the, the work to wind it. <laughs> I'll give it 300 And then the guy took 500 for it and went, oh, I'm going to take my wife out to dinner here in Vegas. Every episode. Every episode. It's every and episode. Yeah, he goes, like, what do you want for that? Five grand. And then he goes, what do you really want for that? <laughs> and, he's like, Stop it, laugh. and then that's it. And then they go, 40 bucks. I'll tell you. How about 29? 29. <laughs> Uh, 39 and he goes selling. and he goes 29 and he always wins and it makes yeah. me mad after a while like I just oh, want yeah. somebody I want somebody to uh, call him out on us 
I want somebody to get something that's even remotely worth what, sure, they're, what right. they're bringing in there. Do they yeah, walk out ever with their annoying. items? Do they ever just yes, go fuck themselves? There are no. people that walk out. and they, they, look, ever given? they look more pathetic than anybody else on the show. Even the people that sell it for too sh- cheap. The people that walk out, okay, I'm just taking this and leaving. The pawn store. You think i got to interview them after they got raped? Well, you know, I got 18% of what I wanted. They do. They say that. I like the guys that, that walk out because I'd like to know how uh, often they come back in a little while later because they realize, I can't get <laughs> with this. It's like, let's make a money. deal meets the people's court. Yeah, right, yeah. With Doug Llewellyn's waiting outside. Well, how'd you think of going there? <laughs> like, honestly, it wasn't pleasant. Uh, I always hated his upper lip. Doug, Doug Llewellyn. Llewellyn. Oh, what a terrible Why upper lip. It? it was just non-existent. Yeah, he didn't ever notice. No, yeah. it really, really right. ruined like, the show <laughs> for me. Like, yeah. How many of those car commercials did you film? <laughs> How deep is the ocean? Holy fuck. How high yeah. is the sky? And I, um, and I, asked you, I think about 340, actually. Jesus. Commercial? Oh, Christ. Yeah, yeah. for, for oh, uh, I don't want to get Ford. You just don't just say, wow, go buy an island and still here, still in business. <laughs> Come on in. That's got to be <sighs> lucrative. 300 commercials for Ford? 300 nationals? Yeah. Holy shit. Yeah. Uh, how many, you know, how many a day? Okay. Um, we got, well, when I started working with them, the old model was one or two a day, right? I mean, I actually did, we did a spot for the Super Bowl back in 2004 that took two days to shoot a 30 second spot. Uh, five years later, we were doing 20 spots in one day. Wow. Did you get better or did they get more efficient or both? Um, I, have, I haven't gotten better at anything in a long time, honestly. <laughs> but what happened was we just had a big conversation about about just I mean, this sounds kind of glib, but just telling the truth, you know, and the truth of dirty jobs, which all that is based on is no second takes. We just never do a second take, and the people are genuine. And it's like, look, you guys hired me because you like this show, and if you like this show and we want to try and do a thing over here, maybe what we ought to do is the same basic thing we do in the show, and then that way, uh, you know, <laughs> there would be sense in the world, right? And I'm like, well, we'll try it. And uh, so we shot, we actually shot closer to 40. They were looking to use three or four, but they used 20, and that changed the whole model. And so then we were just able oh, wow. to really just, just approach the whole thing a lot. You only doing one take. That's the most brilliant <laughs> yeah. thing ever. You know, <laughs> this shooting it from 90 different angles <laughs> no, and I'm there all day. <laughs> Why don't we just over. do it once? Because we do is, it honest. Yeah. That's brilliant. <laughs> that is good. <laughs> but look, ev- everybody in this room knows the honest <laughs> answer to the question. Does it really get better by no. take three or four? Usually the first one or two. One or two, right? Give give the camera guy a chance on take two if you're going to do it. Mm -hmm. But performance-wise, I've never seen it get better. I find myself, honestly, much better after take three or four, for real. Really? Yeah. I don't. I, I'm. I'm terrible in the first couple of takes. Yeah, Afterwards, but what about everybody else in the scene? That's a good point. That's why I shine. My, <laughs> <laughs> they take my take four and they I'd put like it with your do take just one. One more. You you get uh, more recognized from the Ford commercials or Dirty Jobs at it's, this point. It's a toss up. It really is. Huh? I think the one smart thing I did, which was again completely by accident. I, I made him let me wear this stupid hat. Yeah. Right. Uh-huh. So is so, that the famous hat? This is the hat. I, well, I mean, I've hat. got, I've got six hundred. So you have to do the reverse. If you don't want to get recognized, you just take the I, hat off. I take the hat off. <laughs> I swear <laughs> to God, it's true. Yeah, but as long as you don't talk, right, right. Yeah, I mean, got that recognizable voice, that deep voice of soothing, soothing, soothing voice. Yeah, it soothing. just sounds right. honest and comforting. Yes, it just, it just makes you want to buy a Ford. I, yeah. I would think. I mean, <laughs> you no, you, you know what? It's um, it, I started wearing a hat because I can't stand the whole makeup hair thing. On, on sets or anything else, and it and it covers like a multitude of, of sins. Right. And then uh, on dirty jobs, it was just double practical because there was always shit falling on your head. So it's like hats, you know, good idea. And then with the uh, the commercial stuff, I just said honestly, I mean, you did hire me, right? Because you know me and you want people to know me. Yes. Well, this is what I look like. <laughs> so that was like the second brilliant. big. Right. But it was two wow. big barriers. So no makeup one take, and one take. No hair, no makeup. Fuck. One take, right. <laughs> and when you think about it, a lot of people look like me. So if you put somebody else out there, no one's going to know. And I just do the voiceover for my house. <laughs> it's so really pretty famous. simple. That's that yeah, will be the. Yeah. It's really pretty simple. <laughs> he never even has to show up. The greatest negotiating ever. <laughs> Can I, you negotiate um, our new deal, please? I yeah, we need someone like you. I, I live with the that's logic. Great. None of us want to be here. Yeah. Don't yeah. we all just want the money? Yes. Yeah. None In of us end. really want to do the Let's work. Let's just exchange yeah. the cash and walk away. <laughs> oh yeah. I think the car sells itself. Yes. I'll walk by counting the money. <laughs> like whiskey uh, on the frontier. Yeah. Are you uh, doing uh, Deadliest Catch? 
Deadliest catch uh, is still around, yeah. Yeah, and, and you've, you've figured out a way to get in there, and you, you talk to the guys, I guess, after. Is it after a season? It's called After the Catch, and it started as kind of a, you know, what if we just did this? Because I'd always said about the show, as a fan, what people really want to do is sit down with these guys yeah, over yeah, a beer yeah. and just ask them anything they want. Right, I mean, pretty much like we're yeah, doing when they're now. Yeah, the pressure of uh, yeah, with uh, like forty foot swells ship, coming yeah. over the wheelhouse, yeah. you know. <laughs> and so uh, we said, okay, let's try that. And so, and the first year we went up to a bar in uh, I think it was called the Lock Spot, maybe up in Seattle. So it's six crab boat captains and me in this smoky bar uh, around this round table. It's basically Charlie Rose with cigarettes and whiskey. Yeah, right? yeah. And of course, you know, these guys are. These guys are the real deal. They are themselves. That's when you really notice it in that in that bar atmosphere. That little yeah. just sitting there and drinking because they they all come off like really great guys, but you can't relate to that lifestyle as far as being on a fishing boat and uh, uh, t taking a life into your hands. But you can relate to sitting at a bar. Yeah. And these are guys that I think we've all sat at bars with at some point in our life. The crazy thing for me was about three four years ago when Phil died. Yeah, uh, yeah captain of the cornelia marie um i got uh maybe ten thousand letters and i wrote his eulogy and posted it and got you know, crashed wow. my server you know and i i knew people liked him and i knew the show was a thing but what i didn't realize i mean really uh, practically was how relatable they are on a totally different level that you never think about like Phil's the captain of a crab boat. He's got two kids. His kids have troubles. His his crew gives him troubles, and you never think about it in terms of at home. You know, some guy's watching who maybe works on a construction site or maybe he's a school teacher. But everything that happens on the crab boat becomes like a microcosm mm. for what's going on in his world, and and those that weird sort of connection is is real. And when it was suddenly broken, I, I, it was it was shocking how many people reached out. So that's still there, and I think that's why people still watch the show. Yeah, that was a, yeah, that was a weird thing, man. Because you do it's like, oh, you killed off a character on the show. No, yeah. he really died. This did he time. die at work or did he die at home? He died at work, but he but he died in such the most you know heart stopping mundane. He had an aneurysm, basically, right? He had a he had a blood clot, an embolism. I mean. And and it took him slow. I mean, he mm. went down, he came back, they went to the hospital, and suddenly we're shooting a scene, you know, in a Dutch Harbor hospital where he's saying goodbye to his boy and goodbye to the cameraman mm. and then goodbye. And it's like fade to black and suddenly... You're right. We got letters from like, okay, man, that that was an amazing episode. So when's he coming back? Yeah, oh yeah. No, that people literally <laughs> are so used to watching TV as you know the scripted thing we mm -hmm. know all of a sudden something like that happens it's it's just you know it takes people a while to get their head around it. yeah so he knew he was dying in that moment oh yeah boy did he smoke a lot of cigarettes <laughs> first time i met phil he had a cigarette this i swear this is true he had a cigarette in his right hand he had a cigarette behind his ear that was burning okay <laughs> he had a cigarette on <laughs> his Christ. compass now to be fair the 30 foot way there's green water coming over the bow so things are very very sporty so he's got four cigarettes going in and around the wheelhouse, and I walked in, and he says, Hey, Mike, how's it going? <clears throat> and he takes a cigarette out of his mouth, puts it down, puts another fresh one in and lights it for reasons I can't even... <laughs> he's yeah, not yeah. even thinking. He's yeah, just, yeah, yeah. He's just moving, lighting, smoking, working, praying. Yep. Every, uh, every season just seems to get more uh, treacherous. You would think... You would think that... I don't know. You... It would kind of lose its danger element, but uh, again, it's so real that I, I was watching that ice, those chunks of ice coming yeah. down and hitting those guys. Right. I mean, that like boulders of solid ice falling on people on the deck. Why doesn't yeah. somebody who owns a crab company just buy a fucking battleship and use that? <laughs> An ice cutter? We've yeah, done it. Yeah, like, oh, like, what, you know, buy like, you know, buy like the, a destroyer and just go out with a bunch of nets. <laughs> it really is. I don't think anybody... Say, fuck the crabs. I don't think <laughs> anybody that's a fan of the show, uh, of that show, Funny sits dude. down and eats <laughs> crab legs anymore without thinking, like, someone really... Good. Bet their life on this. There's no piece doubt of about crab. it. There's no. You could never. I. I. I freak out if I take a ferry. <laughs> I, I, I'm dead serious. I am deathly afraid. They are getting thrown around. Oh, the most openest water. It's freezing cold, and they're being 
thrown around. A, a calm day to them would be a nightmare to anybody on a pleasure boat. Yeah. And that to them is like, oh, it's a great day for fishing. And then the horrible days yeah. when they had that hurricane up there, yeah. that was insanity to watch them. Like, this can't. No, that Someone's going to die. The thing, it's at night when they're fishing at night and the water is black. <laughs> and it's like, if you go in, that is it. You know what else they're does not it? Getting you. It's Drowning the, would it's be the, the easiest. Um, <laughs> yes. Yeah. It's those work lights, it's those sodium lights that yeah, they use. Yeah. And they create this weird, like this orange bubble around the around the ship. So when you shoot one of the boats from a distance and you see the, the sleet and the snow and the rain and everything else coming in horizontal while these guys are working in big seas oh, yeah. it bathed in this weird crappy orange thing, it doesn't it looks hellish. Yeah. And, and yeah. it is. You imagine if the crabs had cameras what their show would be? <laughs> like you know, they're just going for a snack and it's just a mass murder. Crab Holocaust, <laughs> yeah. really. Yeah, they have their own show about that's this. What it's called murder crab. from above. <laughs> it's, uh, don't go in the cage, man. Don't go in the cage. But there's food in the cage. Don't <laughs> go in the cage. Don't don't liberal do crabs it. blaming each <laughs> don't other. Don't do <laughs> well, this entitlement society thinks that food should be left in a cage for If we didn't look so delicious, man. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, <laughs> and who would have thought you could get a show, even without the element of the danger and the personalities and everything that, that makes the show so great, there's that point where they're bringing up that that pot, that crab pot, and you're going, did they hit a spot? Is it is that going to be full? <laughs> you're you're wondering, and then it comes up empty. You're like, ah, shit, he didn't get it. <laughs> how far how far down are the pots amazing. <laughs> they can go anywhere from two, six hundred feet sometimes. Oh, you know, it's really very shallow water right. where the crab grounds are. Exactly. And then and you'll have these drops that'll right. go for who knows how long. But no, finding the crab it's it's an Easter egg hunt. But you're right, Anthony, when I when I narrate that thing, you know, I mean you'll do four or five in a row sometimes and you know, you get a little loopy. But really, from a from a clinical standpoint, the show could be called you know, what's in the pot? Yeah. You know, because each scene <laughs> you know, is like, what's in a pot? Crab, no crab. Crab, no crab. It's crab! Uh oh, yeah. big wave. Run for your lives, big <laughs> wave. What's in a pot? Crab, no crab. Crab, no crab. It's so freaking cold out here. What's in a pot? Crab, no crab. So, I mean, it's. it's <laughs> new guy. New guy doesn't know what he's doing. <laughs> new guy. New guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, moron. Oh, there goes the thumb. What's in the pot? Crab, no crab. <laughs> <laughs> That's the show. It's the show. But, but people oh, watch because, because you never, ever know. It's like any game show with any reveal, right? Yeah. What's behind the Yep. curtain what's in the box you know what's yeah. you know what's it's, in the box there's any wonder you have all these shows like i this it, is like you just describing the show is better than any pitch of <laughs> course is. done he gets right to it it's like a game show yes, it is. everybody wins we do one yeah, take what's in a pod it <laughs> it's, it's, there's no it's, makeup it's wear a hat everybody's yeah, yeah, yeah. happy we're all gonna yeah. make money i, I want them to do call it crab or no crab you now? after a, after a, a yeah. pitch yeah. and you know after the season i just want to sit down with all these guys and drink can we you make put a, a show camera on it, and that'll be another show. Because wow. they can relate. As much as yeah. they don't fish, you know, you hit your head, and you know, you're trying to hammer up, you know, a poster, and you hit your thumb. <laughs> that hurts. It hurts when you so get that... dragged overboard. We all just hang out. Who doesn't like whiskey? Uh, no, One take. My hat. <laughs> Let's do this. And he doesn't have to leave the bar now. There's no. a show. Jesus, guys, this Mike Grow's brilliant. He really is. Just do an establishing shot when that I'm there, and then I'll leave, and I'll just do the voiceover. I mean, people don't want to see me; they want to see these fishermen. Those guys <laughs> are show. They, those guys uh, would would be the last people you would think uh, could handle celebrity in any way, shape, or form, because they are kind of these really rugged yeah. kind of. Uh, get the job done, guys. Uh, how do they? Like, uh, you get guys <coughs> like great. Sig is, is a fucking star. Well, what happens is there's a uh, there's like a tipping point in all of our lives, right? Where we realize, you know, maybe our reach exceeded our grasp just a little bit. You know, it all it, it always happens. But with these guys, it's been fascinating to watch because it's not just like the boats on the show. That's not the fleet. There are 130 boats in the right. fleet, yeah. right? So you've got six boats that we focus on. So you've got to imagine up in Dutch Harbor from the Pribilofs all the way over to Accutan, you know, these guys, they're a part of a community. And so there's a dynamic within the community of which they're a part oh boy. that they've got to wrangle. And that, you know, it's like you guys going back to your high school reunion, right? Yeah, and everybody's yeah, like, yeah. so, Anthony, how's it going? You know, I think you know how it's going, uh, okay? It's good. <laughs> Not too shabby. It's not bad, actually. So, oh, so they come into the harbor, and and then there's like, ah, oh, here come the fucking here stars. Here comes Hollywood. Yeah. So they got to oh, deal man. with that. But now down here, like in the lower forty-eight, <laughs> <laughs> I love that. In the real, that's world. a show, by the way. <laughs> yeah, that's that another show. show. Yeah. Deadliest catch: the resentment. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> 
That's another show. Here comes Hollywood. Oh, I catch Jake. flounder. I don't have balls. That's right. I mean, water's water. Oh, get him some more makeup, Mary. It's got to be one. Here comes Hollywood. It's exactly yeah. right. But here, That's like great. I've been with those guys in half a dozen really nice <laughs> hotels in Manhattan. Oh, no. And what happens is, I think, I mean, look, in real life, they are the best. But in hyper life, <laughs> like nobody ever told a crab captain, you know, in season two of a hit show in 180 countries, this is what they expect you to do in the lobby of the Mondrian. OK, <laughs> so just note to self, do these things. But here's also a brief list we've put together of things not to do. OK, yeah. that doesn't happen. So it's almost like that. Uh, what are the like, like a reverse halo effect, right? Where people see you, they want to buy you. A, they expect now that the job is to live up to the hugeness right. with which people like you and me would look at them and go, "Wow, you know, it's Sig." Be sick. Yeah. And what that means is smashing somebody over the head, you know, drinking a pint of dram buoy, and uh, you know, working. F- for four days straight. He doesn't want to do that. He just wants to have a shrimp cocktail and, you know, maybe tell a story. But it's, yeah, they're, they've gotten really good at it. They figured it out. But seasons one and two, ooh. Yeah, 180 yeah. countries Brutal. is on? Yeah. 180, wow. It's a huge show, yeah. Yeah. yeah, Discovery, uh, I mean, Dirty Jobs, Deadliest mm-hmm. Catch. Um, you know, most of their premiere shows are in 180-some countries. Wow. Yeah, that's amazing. God no, man. that's, it's ridiculous. Dirty Jobs aired when it was really in its wheelhouse, like in, in 06 and 07, 08, 700 times a year <laughs> in this country, you know, I mean, That's literally a lot like of one, people once a day looking at you in a stupid in hat. shit and yeah. <laughs> grease and making hats. a poop joke. Yeah. 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 One of the, one of the, one of the worst, cause I guess the, the claustrophobia <laughs> that uh, uh, you've, you've been in is that, that door on that, uh, it was almost like a lock, I think, or something, and you had to go into these yeah, little yeah. compartments to grease that shit. I got, and I got clean s- it out. something worse just happened to me in Australia. You're talking about a hurricane barrier. Yes, that was the one in Stanford, right? It's it comes up, right? It yeah. blocks the harbor in a storm you surge. Get inside of it, there's just like dozens of these little steel coffins that men have to crawl in and paint, and then scrape off all of yeah. the barnacles and put on zinc diodes. It's a horrible job. But in uh, Coober Pedy, <laughs> Australia, a couple of months ago, we took the show down under. And I know you're a claustrophobic sort of guy. You'll love this. Opal mining. Have you ever seen anybody mine for opal, opal? before? No. I can't okay. say I have. Here's a short version. Um, you, it's not like gold mining. It's not like bituminous coal. It's not like anthracite. It's not like any other kind of mining you've seen. It's you dig a hole, a shaft, really. So picture a manhole cover. Uh, about 80 feet deep, oh, yeah. use an old Caldwell drill get to get all the of stuff here. out of here. And then they sit you in a on a two-by-four, like a bosun's chair, and they lower you into this hole. And you're looking for uh, faults and fissures in the rock. I did, opals live between sandstone and soapstone, right? And if you find this little that. fissure... Uh, yeah. I was say that. Sorry. Sorry. Go ahead. Continue. So, <laughs> so if you find a fissure... All right. Then you did drill another shaft. And when you're comfortable enough, you go in with big equipment and dig a whole cavern out. But the point is, you can't do any of this until you go to the bottom of an 80 foot shaft and your shoulders literally are touching Holy the sides. Shit. Right. So if you were like an inch tall in the bottom of a Coke bottle, that's what it's like. Only you're looking up and remember the movie, the uh, the with the girl in the well was called The Ring. The yeah. Ring. Yeah. Silence of the Lambs. No, no, the, the, the ring. Yeah, yeah, the, the, the girl's the in the yep. well, and she yeah. looks up. Mm. Man, that, it's 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 so much worse than Why that. Why not make that the hole is, bigger? Yeah, <laughs> make the that's hole a good, bigger. That's a good point. Why make not? a bigger drill. Because the drill's this big, and you know, it's, the more comfortable you are, the slower you work. The slower you work, the poorer you are. The poorer you are, the more pathetic you become. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> the answer. So go faster. <laughs> Faster, faster, smaller hole. So, what are some of the horrible things that have happened? The rope snaps. Now you're down there. Oh man! No. We only had. I mean, that, budget for one rope. <laughs> just got to leave you there. In. That does yeah. happen. But what's worse, and this happens all the time, because in Cooper Pedy, which is South Central Outback, there's no, there's no MSHA, there's no OSHA, there's no, there's nothing, right? So these holes, there are thousands of them. Oh shit! There are thousands of them. But they just leave them. They just leave them. <laughs> okay, so every year. You know, some tourists will go out there, you know, with their camera and back up into one. Oh, man. And they'll find them a season or two oh, later. Oh, there guys another American. Uh, Do they at least die on the fall? 
Oh, oh no. No, because even though it's a long fall, you you got this effect. Oh, it's like bouncing like a off pinball the walls bouncing a off bit. the walls. Well, so no. Nice. But you know the hard would be falling <laughs> Holy in. Holy fuck. Falling in head first, right? Oh, because man. you don't have enough room to turn, to turn around. around. So you spend literally your 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 last 5 days on of consciousness. Head. Maybe with the broken back, you're on your head upside down, ninety feet underground. Have they found people like that? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. And kangaroos and emus and ostriches. Wallabies. Wallabies, show that eh? <laughs> you know what'd be worse is a if you guy. fell down there. Even if you fall down there, somebody's gonna drop a bottle of water down there. It's going eighty feet. It's gonna hit like terminal velocity, <laughs> smash you in the head. You know what these assholes do? They'll pee on you. On their friends when when they're down there looking, oh, the guys are just coming at this. Hey, it's raining! It's raining! Oh, oh we're funny. Those Aussies are Australian. hilarious like that. No, I, <laughs> I love Yuma. It. Good fun. You've probably been to pretty much every uh, country in the world. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean six continents, fifty states, most of the major countries, but um, yeah, no, not not all of them. What about uh, the dark continent? Have I've you, been to the dark continent. You've continents. been there, yeah? It's dark. What'd you have to do there? We went to, uh, let's see, Johannesburg and then down to Cape Town for Shark Week back in 06. Oh, right. Okay. And then I went to the Western Desert Oof. to explore the Sands of the Dead, which is the largest yeah. charted graveyard in human history, with Sahi Hawass to plunder tombs in search of golden masks. Do you ah. get bored at parties when people try to tell you a story? <laughs> yeah, so you're sitting on all of these stories like, yeah, I was oh. in Long Island the other day. Oh, <laughs> trying to figure out which one you want to tell that night because yeah. there's so many. Yeah. Do I go with the shark cage yeah, one or the uh, falling down yeah. the 80 foot hole yeah. and getting peed on? Yeah. I'm not feeling like when in doubt, go with today. the getting peed. Yeah, that's wow. it. Yeah, you got a laugh. So what about it's the desert? So the desert, yeah, this this was years ago for Discovery, but somebody, uh, some goat farmer in the middle of nowhere stumbled across a hole which led into a grave, and uh, being an enterprising goat herder, he raided the tomb, and uh, opening the sarcophagi, he found the remains of whatever, but there was a golden mask where the face would be, and so this suggested some kind of royalty. Uh, but nobody had any record of any royalty ever being in that part of the Western Desert. And so they began to explore some more, found more tombs, more golden masks. So nobody knew what this was. It didn't, it didn't mm. line up with any, uh, anything we knew about Egypt and that, and that wow. part of the time or world. And so I went over there with this uh, archaeologist, and we did a thing called Egypt Week Live, and basically just fancy talk for tomb raiding. But, uh, <laughs> Are you afraid of? Now, now, does that guy get to keep the goat herder? He found it. Does he? He's, he gets he's to keep it. He's never been seen again. Ah, <laughs> I have no idea, actually. No, Probably no, the curse. I, yeah. Aren't you afraid of a curse? Boy, they got a lot of those Honestly, curses over there. I'm, I, I, I'm afraid of ringworm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid of whooping. Well, what happened when you did the tomb raiding? Well, what happened was this. we found uh, hundreds of them. And, really? And it was ultimately... Belloc stole every one of them from him. That's what happened. <laughs> Belloc. Belloc. Belloc's always there. <laughs> no, it was, uh, it was basically Beverly Hills. Um, what they found was this, this community was a community of very prosperous merchants, and in relative terms, it would be like finding Beverly Hills 5,000 years from now, <laughs> you know, and digging up through Rodeo Drive oh. and going, what the heck? Yeah. What, what was here? Bunch of plastic bags. <laughs> it used to be tits. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great mystery. Uh, what are these things? Somebody yeah. explain this. It's crazy. They're all over the place. How far back? Found do, in pairs. How far back do these people go? Do they ever figure that out? I don't know. You know, oh, wow. I mean, honestly, it's I'm just sitting here listening to myself go on and I don't ever want to be confused with an expert. I mean, you could fill yeah. a book with what I Fair don't enough. know. I know like you I know can get into us. a good but story, in this but room, I don't know. You really you, you're, you're an yeah. expert in yeah. this. Yeah. 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 I mean, have you ever been in a shark cage? Oh yeah. Now, how safe are this cuz this one I went out to Nantucket for a vacation and mm -hmm. I absolutely terrified mm -hmm. of the ocean and sharks and for some dumb reason You went the, in? No, the captain Fuck. was was talking me into going. It's totally safe, you know, but blah blah blah, blah stuff. So, yeah. is it? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, look, a shark cage is fine. Most people get hurt in cages, get hurt because they they take their camera and they put it outside the cage, you know, because they want to get a shot, but they uh, don't want the bars in the way. Rather than using the zoom. Yeah, because people aren't, <laughs> aren't bright. And then something, uh, you know, something will come by and snag them. Ugh. You can That's say how what? Most people get hurt. A shark? Well, it's not necessarily a shark. It could be anything. Um, but, but people, cages are dangerous because they create 
an illusion of complete safety, mm. and then you become really complacent, I and saw that's that where you get hurt. Footage where the shark got into the cage. Oh yeah, with two guys in there. He the shark just ran through. They had taken one of the bars out to get a better view with the camera. Shark, and it was a big one, probably a 13, 15 footer, uh -huh. slams into this opening in the cage. 25. He's 25. 25 <laughs> and he was in the Gets cage the with these guys flailing. Holy shit. And the guy ducks down. One of them realized, like, when his head turned the other way, he went through another hole and got out and just left the other guy in there. Yeah. And the other guy decided uh, uh, he would uh, leave that cage. He oh, got look, out. It's the old story being chased by a bear, right? The, the guy slow. says, you know how fast those bears run? Doesn't matter, man. I just got to run faster than you. Faster yeah. than the last yeah. That's it. <laughs> Mike's got to go. This sucks. Ah, shit. Yeah. They're telling us you got to go. Who's it's not us. Uh, 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 Gotti. E-Rock said it. So, yeah, yes, Victoria no. Gotti is saying Huh? Yeah, oh, Liam? Press. You probably have a lot of uh, shows to do around do. here yeah, today. Yeah, but this is my favorite. You know what? I don't know. I don't want to go. Yes, no in the shark show. cage. Safe? So, uh, safer than free diving with sharks. Don't do that. I mean, that's just <laughs> ill-advised. Get, get in the cages. It's harmless. It's fun. But if they ever offer to put you in the, um, the steel mesh suit, the yeah, shark no, suit. No, I would right. never do that. Well, I did that. I got bit. I got bit about 40 times. One tooth got through. There's still a hole in my freaking shin bone from it. How do you but, top these stories? I well, know you don't. Here's how you top it. Forget the sharks. It's not the shark. It's when you dive, and I'm a I've moderately experienced diver, but you got an extra 50 pounds on you, which screws up everything. You've got shark <laughs> bouncing off your chest, <laughs> which elevates your, your rate. I ran out of air at 65 feet <laughs> the, the on the test dive before Shark Week. And that was, the to this day, the scariest thing that's wow. happened to me on this stupid show. What would you have so to how, do? How, yeah, how long did it take them to get you back <clears> up? <throat> well, what happened was a, uh, I had 40 minutes of air. I burned through it in 29. Wow. Okay? So you had to hold your breath for 11 minutes. Yeah. That's, like, <laughs> that's, yeah. that's like bombing, <laughs> blowing through your material. <laughs> <laughs> Except on the yeah, water. Yeah, you're looking, you just did your closing bit. You're at 17. Yeah. <laughs> well, it was, it, was, it, was, it was it was totally humiliating. Uh, but there was a reporter there named Leon uh, for TV guide international writer and he was right next to me and he looked at my uh my gauge and he was like uh oh up we go and i, I was like look i'm never going to make it my last breath was an exhale you know oh. and so i wasn't wearing a normal regulator he was but i wasn't i had a full face mask oh, on man. So you can't... and i had a bicycle helmet screwed into it because a week earlier a shark had bit somebody in the back of the head so the insurance company made me wear this bicycle helmet oh, so he God. can't you get can't my share mask a regulator off. with the guy right. because you got got a mask on your face now i'm also out of air all right i got 40 i'm dressed up like freaking ivanhoe okay i'm 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 dead weight this guy grabs me floods his bc and the two of us kick as hard as we can and we we get to the surface. It takes about 80 seconds. Holy shit. But again, my last breath is an exhale. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Oh, and so I lost my uh, peripheral vision. You started getting tunnel vision. And, and I stopped caring, to tell you the truth. Whoa. Oh, about, that dopamine or something. Yeah. Oh, out. man. It was just like, you know, about 10 feet from the surface, I'm looking around going, all in all, you know, I had a pretty good run. This is going to be, uh, yeah. <laughs> my eulogy is going to be uh, great. They'll yeah. play clips. That's yeah. how we feel every day as we walk out of this building. <laughs> we had a good run. We had a pretty good run. <laughs> yeah. Holy shit. Wow. Wow, that's a great story. Brutal. That's fucked up. I'm so sorry I was late today. I got sorry. jacked up and got in the wrong damn car. You well, know? you come back soon, man. <laughs> we didn't really sell the new show, but it looks like it's going to be a good one. Would you how do it for me when I leave? I'm yes. telling you, it's Absolutely. great. Absolutely. How it, Booze Built America premieres tomorrow at 10 p.m. on Discovery. Uh, I, you know, it sounds like a history show but there's cross-dressing, there's bad language, <laughs> juvenile humor, adult situations, and wall-to-wall -wall drinking. Your listeners okay, are going to Anthony show. Perfect. Yes, yeah. right. described our show, I <laughs> think. Thanks. thanks, fellas. If Mike, you watch, so I won't have to go in another hole for a while, which yeah. is yeah. a goal. <laughs> <laughs> and thanks, Bill's guys. at Caroline's this week, Thursday, Friday.